everybody, it's just Megan here from Spore Print Designs. I'm bringing you a new card today uh, using the same craft artist serif digi kit which looks at Roald Dahl Quentin Blake images. The image I've got today is actually a uh, Revolting Rhymes um, kit part which looks at Little Red Riding Hood before she goes to visit her grandma who of course by now has been eaten by the big bad wolf. Now we're using this, uh, you, of course if you haven't got this digi kit you could be using your own images or in a landscape format that you wanted to do something a bit more unusual with. You can see on my desk at the moment I have a die cut image. Now this image is something that I've created myself on a uh, silhouette machine. Now some of you may not have these machines, I know you can get uh, physical metal dies that you can put through to make specialist windows. Now, um, when I'm able to figure things out a little bit more, I'll try and put up the file uh, that I created to do this this, um, this cut itself. But really, it's just a series of squares put together, and then uh, three different lines, two horizontal and one vertical, to make the divide between. At the moment, it's not very clear how these windows work, um, but once I've got them all coloured in, we'll open them up so that you can have a good look. But what it will allow us to do is to create sort of a boarded edge for the image to go within that then the recipient of the card can open up and create basically a more interactive card and a general sort of more unique look for cards these days. So as you can see I've got uh, three different coloured of markers. Now uh, these are my Spectrum Noir markers. Um, I've got the colours, I showed them up very briefly at the start. What I will do is I'll list those on the blog post that I post along with this video. So if you are interested, um, have a look down in the link below and go on over to my blog to have a good look. So I've used my lightest colour here as an all over wash on the frame. I just used the, um, the chisel side of the nib just to get a smoother coat on the outside. And then I'm going in with my uh, medium shade now to put in the darkest lines which are actually the wood grain patterns themselves. I'm sure many of you will already have wood grain patterned paper, it's not something that I had to hand and I wanted to show just how easy it is to make your own wood grain pattern paper without having to spend money on purchasing it if it's not something you've already got in stock at home. So uh, basically how I create this myself, I work on a couple of focus points within the, uh, the image in which you're creating. So for me obviously it's these bay windows. And what you need to do is look at um, some sort of knots that form naturally in the wood. You're going to recreate those in your focus points. Try and keep the lines pretty angular. Even when you're looking at wood that has been cut open, you can see those knots. They don't tend to be particularly rounded. So what I do is I cluster some pointed sort of ovals around one area and then create lines going around those ovals until the lines verge out to be straighter. Hopefully that's quite clear from what I'm saying as, as you're watching me create it myself. There we go, that's the, there's a little knot and then lines coming out from it to straighten out and make it view into the rest of the wood. Try not to overdo it on knots, I know it's very tempting, um, but to get the most natural look, a lot of the, uh, the actual wood grain itself will just be those funny little wavy lines. Have an experiment with this, um, if it's something you're not comfortable with or you want to ask any further questions, just, just drop me a message in the, uh, in the availability below to drop me a comment or of course leave me a message on my blog, I'll be happy to help in any way I can. So once we've got all of these lines on, you can see I'm just filling in the little patches between, then we will have a look at putting some more shading and depth for the image. Now when I put down this base coat, because there's quite a lot of ink with that lightest layer, as I'm putting on the darker layers here, you will see naturally that the ink starts to blend a little on its own. It doesn't quite look as harsh and as contrasted as it did when I first put it down. As you can see, the ink I'm putting down now looks particularly dark in comparison to the sides on the light. So it will naturally blend, um, but what we'll want to do, just to give it a bit more depth to this image and really make it look a little bit more natural, we will go in and add some more colour. What I decided to do, instead of going in uh, with another dark tone, as I said, the middle tone itself is what I've done for the darkest lines, and uh, my only other option really was to go over again with my lightest tone. Now, we're having two layers of the darkest, the lightest tone, sorry, the two layers of the lightest tone mean that we will get a more saturated colour on the paper and naturally make it look darker. 
I'm just increasing uh, the amounts on the outsides just so that you can see a bit of uh, depth and dimension between uh, what is the frame and what are the windows. You can see now I've just opened those up and I'm scoring them with my bone folder to make sure that they open evenly. And this will allow us to colour the insides so when the recipient is opening those windows they're not getting the stark contrast of the white. We want to make sure that those are covered too. So, opening those out, you can see I've got scratch paper underneath. Just try and not make sure that you're covering all of your surfaces. If you're anything like me, I can never do things neatly. So we'll cover all of that again, just the lightest tone here, uh, just to make sure we've got all of those lines. Try and make sure that you're not putting down too much colour, because obviously the colour will see through. You can see it's done so from the other side already. And we don't want it to uh, interfere too much with the wood grain effect that we've created. So just a couple of sweeping lines, still with that lightest shade on the outsides. Give it as much depth, give it as many coats of this as you want. Obviously if you wanted to go in with the medium shade, uh, you'd be more than welcome to do so. And of course you could even go to that darker colour for the wood grain itself. You'll see actually in this video I don't even use that darkest colour that I had down, ready to use if necessary. So opening the windows and looking at positioning. Now this is really important. You have to bear in mind that uh, your recipient, when they receive the card, the windows will be closed, especially if you posted the item. So make sure that when you're lining it up and getting everything together, that the natural image is not going to be too obscured from the frame. So you can see I've put it down there, and uh, Little Red Riding Hood's face is literally just sticking through. You've also got the portrait on the left-hand side, which is nice and visible, and her basket amidst the windows as well. Trim off the excess, um, it's worth saying that this will be a standard size card, so if you work in uh, the American measurements then it will be 5 by 7, and if you're working in centimetres it's just shy of 15 by 12. So uh, bringing this all together, as you can see the windows are now attached, and if you use your bone folder they'll just sit a little bit more flat as you send them through the post. So I'm deciding to attach this to a craft card stock. This is just a standard card. And with the edges looking a little bit uh, in terms of a contrast for colour, I decided to go back in with my lighter shade once again and just try and match the colours up a little bit better. There was only a small amount showing, but I thought just for continuity it would be better for me to keep everything the same. So just, uh, I'm afraid I've got a bit off camera there, my apologies. I'm just rotating the image around and covering the sides because they're a little bit white. Just again to make it a little bit more seamless when we put everything together. Just using my tape runner, as you can see there, I put a line down and suddenly thought, oh how silly. Uh, windows have dimension. So even if this is going in the post, let's try and make it a little bit more dimensional. And uh, get our recipients to feel a little bit more involved when the image comes to them. Make it a bit more realistic more than anything. So, got some um, foam tape there that I'm just measuring and laying down roughly. I'll put all on four sides and then just a couple of strips in the middle just for support. Again, if you're posting this, remember that obviously our, our post people can be a little bit rush, uh, a little bit vicious sometimes. So try and support the centres as well. It's really important if you want a nice smooth image by the time it actually reaches your recipient. Remove the foam tape, as you can see, and then we'll just mount it onto the card base itself. A little bit fiddly there. Okay, and then once it's stuck down, give it a really good press. So I opened up the windows, had a look. Now, it's up to yourself, obviously, if you prefer to have the wood grain inside the windows as well, you can, of course, do so. I think the majority of people will keep this closed when it's on display, so I wasn't too worried myself. I was quite happy to leave it there and uh, send it up to my recipient, but I thought to myself, do you know, just as a little bit more final detail, why don't we add some acetate? Really give that window shine that will make people realise, you know, the effect of the image itself, and just give it a little bit of something special. So just marked it with my scissors and then brought across my um, Fiskars paper trimmer there and just trimmed two sizes the same of the acetate that would fit the window itself. So uh, I'm afraid you can't see, I'm just measuring off to the left to make sure that that all fits and once I've trimmed it down appropriately, uh, put that to one side and do the same for the other one as well. Measure it up against the other one that's the right size, cut it down and again measure the window. Now if you're uh, able to use the template that I will try and put on my blog 
then these are pretty much identical these windows um, they should be exactly the same if you're using a die I would imagine it's the same as well but if you're wanting to use a craft knife to create your own bay windows then uh, try and get them as central as possible because obviously as your eye goes across the card you want to make sure it's even obviously it will also help with your acetate as well to make sure that that's nice and even and not sticking out of edges I'm just using a small amount of glossy accents to adhere this in now if you have uh, the Ranger Multi Matte Medium I would completely suggest you doing so I've actually run out myself and I'm struggling to get it in the UK unless you get it online um, and have not had the opportunity to do that so as you can see I've just put a little bit of glossy accents down pressing down my acetate and getting my bone folded just to make sure there's no air bubbles and that the um, acetate and the glossy accents is completely fixed down a little bit of scrap paper just in case any of that uh, additional glossy accents comes out we didn't want it to go around the frame of the card so just in there and as you can see any excess that's coming out of the glossy accents go sparingly because it is quite a uh, a runny um, liquid any excess there I'm just using my little X cut scissors I'm just using the point to withdraw any excess there but with it being a um, a smooth glossy surface it won't show too much in comparison to sort of a matte finish so repeat the steps again on the other side and get that glossy accents down in order to sit down the adhesive again use scrap paper underneath and just take your time to enjoy it there's no rush um, in order for you to do that now I had a look at the image itself and I considered what else I could do if I wanted to embellish this further I know several viewers on YouTube are big into the flower scene now it's, it's not uh, what I choose to do to embellish my card but I can personally see that if you had some real three dimensional flowers along the bottom it would look really beautiful especially as the spring or summer scene you wouldn't have to put a full scene behind this as I am today but perhaps you could just put sort of um, a windowsill image with maybe a vase and some flowers or perhaps even um, a, a scene with a family within maybe um, this year you're looking to send some cards to some relative to update how your Christmas went your own personalized pictures of your family would be really cute for this so that's the final card finished as you can see I've got all of the design together, the windows will open and close nice and flat for postage. Let me know if there's anything that you would do to improve this image or whether you've got any questions about the process is complete. I hope that uh, it's nice and clear for you today. If you haven't got any questions, just drop me a message in the comment box below or comment on my blog post which I will link to in the bar at the bottom. Thank you ever so much for watching and I'll see you again soon.